This next bead that I want to show you is a really good example of a hole that was drilled pretty much in the middle, although I, I think I was trying to drill it closer to the top. And then when I was all done, the balance wasn't correct. So really when the, the bead hung, it, it hung like this. See, it, it didn't even hang from front to back. It, it hung so that the back showed. <laughs> actually, you know what? Actually, I actually built this hole in. I did not drill it afterwards. So what I would do in this case is I would fill that hole with black clay, re-bake it, and then perhaps find another way to attach this. Or perhaps maybe I would incorporate some wire. But again, look at the balance on this. And that is why these holes are so much of a design decision, either good or bad, um, in the corporation of building the whole piece. Now, a lot of people ask me to drill holes from top to bottom. Well, I can't do that when it's this thin and that long. I can drill it across. Um, and basically, the reason that I like to drill all these pieces across is because I have become very fond of this sort of trapeze type of um, effect. See here how this would look really nice in a, a trapeze. Uh, again, an another bead like this would be really cool to, to drill across the top and hang the bead. It's still double-sided, but it hangs kind of fun that way. So in doing that, well, how do I choose um, <clears throat> what side to to drill from? Do I drill it this way or do I drill it that way? And what's the, the focal? Um, in other words, if I draw the bead this way or if I draw the bead that way, you're going to have a different set of patterns coming up on the top. Well, I kind of decided that this was the way I was going to drill it, period. <laughs> and Lori, I hope this is okay. Um, that's why I get a little nervous about drilling up other people's stuff. Once they've bought the, the bead, I, I don't like making those kinds of decisions. So I guess the moral of the story is I should put holes in everything before I sell it. But um, that means that I would have to make those design decisions for myself before I actually started. So here you can see I'm, I'm far enough from the top. That's that hole is really fine. It's really working out. And this is such a short distance. I can go ahead and uh, drill all the way through. So there's the hole that's coming out on the other side. And then this bead is going to be pretty much balanced. So that one's done. I didn't have to use the drill press. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> All right. Uh, I did mention that um, these little holes here can be vulnerable if you're not putting something like leather or wire or something stationary in them. Uh, one of the things that I like to do with holes is to put a little tiny eyelet in there and that actually really finishes the bead nicely. Um, sometimes you can just push it in and it'll stay in with pressure. Sometimes you need to make the hole a little bit bigger. Let's do that just to get that eyelet in there. And sometimes you can super glue the eyelet in. You don't want to plug up your hole again with super glue, but it, just to hold the eyelet it works. And here we go. See, now that little eyelet looks really, really nice. I'm going to put an eyelet in on the other side as well. And that bead is really nicely finished. These, like I said, I'm not a little pieces and parts person. <laughs> not at all. 
And I like big jewelry because I don't have to deal with little pieces and parts. Oops, got to make the hole a little bit bigger, which is fine. And polymer clay is so forgiving. And also when you put these eyelets in, what's kind of nice about that is if you've got any sort of rough spots around the edges of your hole from the drilling, those eyelets really um, make it nice. See, there we go. Okay, just a few more things about drilling holes. Now this piece here, I can drill from top to back, but I can still put something across. And I've drilled several little holes in the bottom here because it's my plan to dangle things. So, you know, this is definitely something I would do after I made this piece. Again, another design decision. Um, let's see, oh, here's a good one. This piece is was requested that I drill across the top, but if I drill the hole down here uh, and she wants to hang it this way, then I'm not, then the cord is gonna bump this part here. So when I drill this, I'm gonna drill it right there at the very tip so that cord won't interfere. And this is definitely something that I want to mark on both sides because if I just went up to the drill bit and started pushing the drill press um, on this, chances are it would jump and scratch my piece. So now this piece was a two-part piece. I'm gonna have the holes drilled across this way, but in this case, this goes together, I'm gonna drill this one down this way because again, it's going to create some kind of a, of a trapeze. And I'll just go ahead and, and drill this straight down. And see how it's, it, it's hard to hold on to things. I should mention that there are jigs that people have created to help them hold things. And um, I'm not one of those people that's invented jigs, but perhaps at some point in my career I will. Um, you know, I would look up drill jig on the internet and you can get some ideas. But here we go, this hole is started and then I'll, I'll be able to um, complete that on the drill press. This keeps coming undone. Now, this piece, <laughs> this piece <laughs> is difficult. I have this saying that if you create the problem, you have to create the solution. Well, see, this is not level or even on the backside. So if I drill a hole, I may expose the hole midway through the bead. So there's a couple different things I could do. I mean, I certainly could put a hole in from front to back, but I'm, I'm kind of thinking that I want this hole to go sideways and I'm hoping, I'm strategically placing it so that it goes through all the parts that are stuck next to each other. And there is going to be a place where the stringing <clears throat> comes right up against the uh, bead itself. In other words, um, I may have some overlap. And then uh, when I go to my uh, components box, which would be like little stones and little tiny silver beads or other types of components, then I can um, work with that. The designing comes in stages sometimes. Sometimes I lay out the whole jewelry piece and then sometimes I uh, drill the hole first and then lay it out, you know, depending on what my, my mood is, because uh, that's a simultaneous um, thing. First you do A and, and then you decide B. So see, this is coming through now. But what I mean is that the beads that I connect this with are gonna overlap the, the bead right there. And you still can't see the hole, it, but it has different textures there. So uh, perhaps 
I could put another hole over here and I could string this bead this way, or I just want it dangling and I'll string it that way. So that one's done. Um, let's see here. Oh, this is a hole that I drilled afterwards, but it is very thin and it's going through several pieces. So that's about as thin as you want to get it. And um, you don't want your pieces to be vulnerable because of the size of the, um, the hole. So, uh, you know, it's those types of drillings that you maybe should use a smaller one first and then go in with a larger one. These are interesting pieces because there's actually a little tube that's in there and it goes all the way through and that enables me to run a piece of tiger wire through the entire bird here. Um, and like sometimes I can't get wire wire in through there, but it'll, I can get tiger wire in through there and I already tested this. But that way, um, that's already in there. Let's see here. Here's another piece that the wire was embedded in the bird when it was built. So this is already got a, a way to attach things. And let's see here. Oh, this is a hollow domed bead. Now, th this is something very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm going to look for the best orientation here. In other words, which is the orientation that has the best visual balance. Um, and again, that's my decision because not all of these little petals are even. So I'm looking for something that makes sense. And I think I want that at the top. Now, if I drill through the middle, it's going to do this, right? So it's my goal to drill more towards the top and then it won't have that balance issue. Now, the other problem with a hollow bead is I can drill in one side here, but since it's hollow, um, I'm only gonna be drilling in one side and basically not in one side and out the other. This is a challenge. It's a challenge to get your string in one side and out the other because the string goes in there and then it doesn't know how to get outside the other hole. So that's a tough one. And um, I would probably work with wire or something of that nature in order to make this actually work. So let's see if I can do that. And I'm going to put it over here because I kind of ran my, my drill across there. And I can make these holes bigger. Give myself more opportunity to go through at the right place. But literally what happens is, I'm going to use wire to illustrate this. Okay, see how, see how I'm struggling here? to get the wire through the other side, it's because the inside is hollow. But because I've had some practice and whatnot, now this is how the bead is going to, to lay. So that's done. Okay, now uh, this piece here, um, this I would probably choose to put from front to back. And, um, this is something that I think is very cool. And while we're talking about holes, this is a bale. It's a pinch bale. Okay. So really, I don't need a complete hole, although I might go ahead and do that and then just pinch the bale into it. Um, let's see here. And that will be very strong. I also have to kind of see, okay, how far down do I want this? I'd like some movement here. So, all right, I saw that. Like right here. I'm gonna make this thing here. And we used a lot of pinch bales when I was on the uh, jewelry TV show because it's just so easy for doing all those leaf drops. 
and um, they're making more and more of these on the market to look really nice and literally you just take your pairs of pliers and then you pinch these things together see like this and I would really pinch that well and then it's hung so that's kind of cool um, here's another example of a earring that was hung with a pinch bail and what's kind of neat is you can take these off um, if you take them on and off and on and off and on and off of course you're going to work harden the uh, the bail and it, the metal will probably snap but they make very short work of hanging some things so um, I think that's everything that I wanted to show you here on my table. Let's go to the drill press. Okay, well here we're, <laughs> we're at the drill press. And I know not everybody has a drill press, but um, really, it's a very valuable tool to invest in. Um, the little Dremel tool actually can lift out of the press, and um, that's also an asset because you can have a motorized drill. Um, but basically, uh, this is something that you want to make short work out of drilling, and you can lock that thing in so that it doesn't move around. Um, the drill press itself, which I know you can't see, has a lever on it and maybe you can see it. See how this lever will push the, the drill bit down through the hole and hopefully the, this hole is centered. Now you also can move the drill back and, and forth. Um, so you want to make sure that your press is set up correctly. And then the, the drill bit being this long, um, you can't drill a bead longer than that. But the other thing to take into consideration is you don't want the drill too long because when you press it down, it, it shouldn't go down you know, into the table. So all those things are setting up your drill press. Then uh, I have safety glasses here. So I know you can't see my face, but I'm going to put these safety glasses on because I have broken drill bits before and you don't want the drill bits flying into your eyes or into your face. So uh, this is a very strong drill. I'm going to put my safety uh, glasses on. And uh, the other thing that I would mention for safety in terms of working with equipment is that you don't have loose parts like I, I am wearing a ring, but um, I don't have any loose parts like hair that this can wind around because if you have a ponytail and you look the other way and your pony gets caught into this drill bit here, uh, then you're in bad shape. Um, oh, there's one other thing about the drill. Um, let me take this out again. Remember the, the little chuck on the little hand drills? This also has a chuck right here and this is a uh, way to even make the drill longer or shorter but you really need that chuck tight and then you should also make sure that your drill is straight because if the drill is crooked your hole is going to be crooked and sometimes the pressure can actually bend thin drills one way or another um, that's just something that is equipment maintenance and you just have to be careful about that. So this is a this is a locking agent here that allows me to screw and unscrew the chuck. So it's going to get a little noisy. Let me just test here that um, this is working. Yep. Now polymer clay is soft. Uh, you may have seen me take this little piece off of the drill itself. Well, this is <laughs> this is hardened polymer from coring out beads because what has happened is the friction in the drill bit has caused the bead to sort of remelt. And you don't need a real high speed to drill through polymer. So uh, I'm only going to do it on um, on the on a slow um, speed. 
So let's go to work here. Okay, so this first speed here is kind of a no-brainer because it's from top to bottom. So if I drill this, see my bead is way over there? Well, here we go. And ta-da. Now, okay, obviously something was wrong because it didn't go into the center there. So the way that this bead is going to hang is like this. It's not so bad, really. It's probably me who didn't make the bead centered. You know, one way for me to alleviate this is to go down on the top and down on the bottom. So that's something I'm going to do in this bead, okay? So let's try again. Halfway down. Halfway down again. Now, I actually felt it meet in the middle. But sometimes, if, if I am not feeling it meeting in the middle, that's when I can go in at a later time and actually test it with a hand drill. So now I know it's, it's drilled. These little pieces, too, make really great toggles. So now this piece is drilled, and this is the other part that goes with it. And I had mentioned that it's a really sharp point right here, and the drill bit helps. Now, if I hold this bead in a, in a weird direction, um, my hole is going to go weird. So it's really important that I have it level. And I'm, I'm constantly looking to see that I'm not twisting or turning the bead in any way that it shouldn't be so that it, so that it remains level. Uh, sometimes that's why I like the hand, the hand drill. Go real slow here. I'm going to go in one side, then I'm going to flip it, and because I've marked it, and I'm watching to see if it's level, you know, not turn this way and not turn that way, I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, I, I put the other hole right in the middle there and then I have a better chance. Better chance of this meeting in the middle. Now, I don't want to wreck this bead, so I'm going to go ahead and finish it with my hand drill. And that's plenty for this bead to hang level, see, and then it, it goes through at the top there. Okay, so that set is done. Um, I mentioned that this one here was a real odd one, and again, it's the orientation of how I hold this bead that's what there's some really good jigs for. And let's try this one. Definitely one I'm going to fish around and complete by hand. And, and you can almost feel it when the hole meets itself. Now, like I said, this one was a challenge, but I'm up for it. And sometimes you have to actually core out the, the polymer because what happens is when you push in this way and then you push in that way you, all these little shards you're you're pushing the shards back and forth and let me see 
<laughs> I can I can blow on it and I know that the hole is is completed if the the shards come out the other side. So um, and we've got a pretty good track record here. <laughs> Let me try this one too. Now, I want to explain that this is not for the um, the faint at heart. Really, truthfully, what I do a lot of times is instead of putting the drill bit back, is I push the piece up into the drill bit. I, I just have a better visual that way of seeing where the bit is going. So let me illustrate that as well. And you see what I, I did there? I'm actually, I'm pushing the bead up into the drill. Like I said, this is not for the faint of heart because if you get your fingers next to that drill, you're going to drill your finger. So you have to be focused 100% on what you're doing while you're drilling this. And you could use tweezers, you could use um, extensions to actually be your fingers, but um, you know, I just want you to get the concept of what I'm doing here. See, I can feel that it connected. So that one's done. And then this is the hardest part, okay? This bead was requested to drill from top to bottom, but of course you can see that the drill bit isn't uh, long enough. And also, the other part to that is that I can't even get the, the drill bit in. So I'm gonna have to adjust my stand here. And that's, th these things move up and down. And again, they also move this way. So as I'm adjusting this stand here, I also need to see, it's not quite in the center there. That would throw me off a little bit. You know, get a, a good press so that this goes right in the middle of the hole there. That's that's almost paramount. Okay, so now I can go ahead and drill this from side to side, or I'm sorry, from top to bottom. I have, I personally have much more control if I push the bead up into the drill bit. So I, I want to make sure that this meets in the middle and, um, and I'm going to feel it catch and it could possibly make a bigger hole in the middle because you've got two things coming together like this, but at least your ends will look finished. <laughs> okay. and that I can hold that as level as possible. Now I want to show you something on purpose here. You really have to hold on to your bead because if you let your bead go, it's going to go Watch. I know, I know what it's going to do. So I have to really hold on to the bead. Um, now, I want to see why I'm not connecting here. And it's probably because this one just isn't long enough yet. So uh, let's try that. And this is why drilling things from length to length is really much more of a challenge than drilling them across. And uh, I guess I'm going to make the holes beforehand <laughs> if, I, if I think that that's a popular thing. And I felt it.
So that one's drilled through. Okay. Um, let's see here. We mentioned from front to back. And um, let's see. I don't have too many more earrings here to drill front to back. Oh, here. I got these little pieces front to back. Now, you know, again, they're all design decisions on how you want these things drilled. This bit is fairly large. Well, what that's going to do, the hole will be more flexible. In other words, you can put a smaller jump ring in a bigger hole and the, the item will dangle a little bit different. And you may or may not want that, like in here, because I wrapped it with wire, I didn't need a big hole there. But if I was gonna put a jump ring in there, I might want the jump ring to actually uh, dangle on the piece. So in this case, sometimes I can even do two for one, let's hope. <laughs> let's hope I can hold it. So that I'm drilling the same hole in the same place. Nah, that's not, that's not a good idea. We're just gonna eye it. But this is why a drill press goes really, really fast. Oops. See, it won't press down into the hole there because I changed it for the last bead to accommodate the last bead. And this is actually a Dremel Multi-Pro Deluxe Drill Press Stand. It's not centered. There we go. And they get out of adjustment. They're not perfect. Um, that's so quick and easy. Okay, so in that short time, I've done four of these pieces. And um, you know what, these are all design decisions. You know, how, how big you want these holes, where you want these holes, whether you want a hole or not, because you could certainly wire wrap something. But um, basically, it's part of the design decision. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little documentary now <laughs> on making holes and that uh, you'll have some courage and some faith that you can do it. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Barbara McGuire and uh, we'll see you again soon.